If you ever wondered if anyone else was sick of seeing Monday.com ads, well, you are not alone. At 336,444,341 views across 15 ads, I can confidently say that I cannot be the only person who has just gotten annoyed with Monday.com ads. So we will be comparing Monday.com at over 336 million views to the relatively new kid on the block. Well, they've been advertising for a while, but they recently got a big boost in their marketing budget, right.com at just over 24 million views across the four ads that I've been able to find. So we're going to dive in here and figure out which one is if you manage a team, you should be using Monday.com. Hey everyone, unless you have been using Adblocker for the past three and a half years, you've most likely seen an ad from Monday.com and maybe seen an ad from Reich.com and you were one of those 336 million views or 24 million views for Reich. So let's go ahead and jump on in here. I was able to find, or myself and my team were able to find 15 Monday.com videos. The most viewed ad we could find was at 74 million views posted in 2018. And then the next one we'll go through is at 67 million and then number three at 56. There are some ones that were posted this year, of course, that are under a million, and it'll be interested, interesting to see how these go. So depending upon how uh, YouTube treats this for the uh, copyright, I may or may not be able to do another video following up on how many more views the 2021 or the 2020 videos get and how things perform in 2021. And then for Reich, we were only able to find four. It's not like Facebook where you can just go to the ads library and see everything a, a channel is running. So we'll go through the 17 million views and then the four and a half million, which is the one that just grinded my gears the wrong way. And this is the reason that I decided to do this video in the first place. The Monday.com ones were annoying, but at least the ads were good. The, the last one we'll get to. I think it was annoying. It was condescending and just missed the mark. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in looking at the first ad from monday.com. So I'll do line by line. Hopefully that will help with the uh, copyright. My team and I always had trouble managing our tasks until one of my colleagues found monday.com. So the reason I think that this is a remarketing ad is because it jumps straight into the prospect problem, which is managing a team. And unlike the other Monday.com uh, ads that I've seen, uh, they don't specifically call out who the ad is for. And I think Monday actually is did something that I have or will be using in my future copywriting because I think it's really clever the way they call out prospects in the next ad we'll be looking at. But this one I think is just a remarketing one. And then we'll also get to the implied um, social proof here, which I think the way that this is done for remarketing, especially if you can use it as a customer testimonial, is a great way to go. So let's go ahead and keep going. You can see the task owner, what the deadline is, change the status, and it's all in one place. In so all, and it's all in one place. This is something that uh, I'm gonna generalize from a lot of the monday.com ads. This is something that they really harp on a lot. So I know it's a really important benefit. And you'll see here that they've, the structure of this ad, they have gone, they've stated the problem. And then in the next, essentially the next couple of lines, they give three features and the benefit. So you always wanna make sure that with your advertising, you're not just talking about what it does, right? So task owner, deadline, change status, those are all just features, things that the person can do with the platform. And why do they care? They care because all of that is done in one place. So the one place is the big benefit of this ad because there's literally three lines. We're, we're more than halfway through already. Inside each task, you can make comments, attach files, tag people. It's brilliant. It's so here they're just listing out the um, they're just listing out the features and they're listing out what you can do. So the C change and make is highlighted in pink because those are the actions the prospects going to be able to take. They're going to be able to see, change, and make. And the implied what this implies is C is implying transparency because they're going to be able to see everything. Their business or team becomes transparent. Then change is important because that implies flexibility where something that they might not be getting in part of, in their current project manager and then make the, this is a verb that they're going to be able to make something, gives them control over their project management and their team. Now, of course, um, I could be reading into this way too much, but uh, that's kind of where if I were taking a deeper dive into see why would change, make, and see be important to a team manager, that would be what each one of these is implying. And of course, you could say something 
into the effect of if we come back here, up here, um, inside inside each tax, make comments so you can have more trend or so you can easily communicate. Oh my gosh, okay, losing my train of thought. I'm looking at my notes here. So if we come back to the script in the first part of this section, you can see the task owner so you can have more transparency or you can change the status so you have complete control or flexibility over your project planning. And so anytime you're looking at a feature, you always wanna add that so you can to essentially tell your ideal viewer, why does it matter? Why should I care? So let's go ahead and finish up this ad so we can move on to the other three. Take it's away. completely transformed the way that we work. Honestly, I don't know what we would do without it. So the whole way that this ad is put together is a fake testimonial. Now, I wouldn't, fake is probably a strong word, but the way, the whole way it's structured, even in the opening, she, the presenter says, uh, a colleague told me about it, right? And so this is something that you can try and do with your testimonial. So this is a great thing to do in place of your testimonials, assuming you had a budget to hire an actor or, or actress to do this for you. But I think that part of the reason that this ad worked so well is because it's structured like a testimonial, even though you and I know it is not a testimonial. We know for a fact that that is a paid actress, right? But it's structured like a testimonial and it makes the whole feel of the ad a lot more conversational and relatable and feels like um, kind of social proof. Also, I want to point out, um, not to be super creepy, but when I was scrolling through the comment comments, <laughs> the comments, when I was scrolling through the comments, there were a lot of positive comments on her accent. So if you are looking for a voiceover artist or you're looking for an actor or actress, uh, apparently a lot of people, both men and women, not just a bunch of creepy dudes, men and women, I made sure to look, uh, liked the accent of this particular actress. So let's go on to number two, which is the ad I have seen the most. And this is at 67.9 million views how to manage any team. So again, we'll go uh, line by line and I will have to skip through some of this a little bit. Let's go ahead and dive right in. If you manage a team, you should be using monday.com. It's a platform to manage any team and any project. Market so there we go, that's six seconds in. So something else when you're looking at other YouTube ads is to really pay attention to what they do in the first five to 10 seconds. So in the first five seconds, before you can skip this ad, they have essentially enrolled their ideal prospects by saying, if you manage a team, and this is something that I think is really ninja that they did, and then they go straight into what the features are and then what the offer is. The offer is a project management tool and it's called monday.com and all of that is done within the first five seconds. I mean, if you wanted to talk about what you could perfectly do in the first five seconds, the only thing that you could try and squeeze in here is some sort of benefit, but really the two features that um, they brought up here, which is it's a platform to manage any, the two features are manage a team and manage a project, right? And then identifying the prospect identifier is if you manage a team. Now, something that I really like about this ad and the way that they they uh, they change it in the other ads where they specifically target marketers and they specifically target remote teams. But here with this ad that's general is instead of saying if you're a manager or if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a startup, right? Instead of using a label, they actually just talk about the action that's being taken because all all of those people have to manage other people. So instead of listing out entrepreneur, business owner, manager, you know, uh, president or, or whatever their, their job title is or the label that the ideal viewer or ideal prospect might have, they just go straight into what is actually being done. And this is something that um, I actually haven't seen in any other ad and I've watched a lot of YouTube ads. Um, so this is definitely something that I'm going to try in the future because uh, I, in the past, have been, uh, I wouldn't say guilty, but a lot of the times what I do with our ads is I'll say entrepreneur, creator, business owner, as opposed to talking about what is the action that's being taken as opposed to, for example, saying making an ad for a YouTube course, I would say YouTube creator, right? As opposed to if you make videos for YouTube and you say, if you make videos for YouTube, well, that could be an advertiser, that could be a small business owner, um, that could just be a one-off content 
content uh, post versus if I say, if you're a YouTube creator, well, I'm eliminating other people that might actually find value in it. So that's just kind of an off the cuff thing. I, I know I'm talking a lot. I'm really trying to make sure that uh, this video doesn't get copyright strike. Okay, let's, let's go on. Marketing campaigns, classic project management, sales pipelines, creative productions, anything. So here, um, they started with if you manage a team and then they're kind of funneling down their prospects more. They're just listing out the different types of projects or teams that would find value in their platform. I think, uh, I think here, if I'm looking at my notes correctly, I think that marketing teams seem to be um, someone they go after a lot. It might just be because I'm a marketer, so I see more of those ads. Um, but the fact that I think they put marketing campaigns first uh, is important. And then classic project management, I couldn't quite figure out which demographic they were going after there, um, but I'm sure that that's important because, I mean, 67 million views um, can't be too wrong, right? So let's go ahead and keep going. We'll start with a board. Here you can track everything your team is working on. Columns are completely customizable, so you can track what's important to you. So I really like this. Um, number one, again, it's talking about everything's in one place, everything's in one place. That's a common theme throughout all of their ads. And then here the line, columns are, are completely customizable. So that's a feature. And you say, columns are completely customizable. And then you just kind of move on to the next thing. And then you can add Gantt charts. So something that is really powerful that you can do in your ads, and I know I've already brought, already brought this up, but is using the phrase, so you can. I always fall back, fall back on this when I'm doing my own copywriting and I'm trying to figure out like, okay, I have a feature here and it's important, but I don't know why. Right? So using the phrase, so you can, can tie any feature you have to something that your prospect or ideal customer actually cares about. So here, it's so you can track what's important to you. And that's giving a result or benefit to the feature of custom columns, right? So I know that might seem like rudimentary, like, okay, well, duh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but you'd be surprised how many ads and how many just sales letters list out a bunch of features and don't use the phrase, so you can. You really can't use that too many times because when every time you, every time you use that, you're connecting a feature to something, the, to a benefit or end result that your ideal customer actually cares about because they don't want custom columns. They want to be able to see what's important to them. And that's why they care about custom columns. Custom columns in and of themselves just, just aren't important, right? So then we're gonna go on to a feature list here. Everything is visual. See who's in charge of what and easily prioritize. Upload files and get quick approvals and feedback. So here what they do, you see upload files and get quick approvals and feedback. So notice with these next two, when it says views, ne next it's going to say views that you can see, views that you can see important information and then make sure projects don't overlap or see breakdowns of progress. So those these next two lines, they're giving a feature and then they're telling you why it's important. So it's a more advanced, it's, it's essentially the so you can without using so you can. So they're listing a feature and then telling you why it's important. Views let you see the information in your board in different ways. Make sure projects don't overlap or see the breakdown of progress. Whoa. Whoa, <laughs> super cool, right? Okay, so skipping ahead a little bit, just a tad here, then they go into being able, again, being able to see everything in one place. And then they go through a feature that I would be interested if you could comment below, if you actually work in an office, when or how this might actually be important to you and your business, or you've seen it used in the past at a place you've worked all your projects in one place. You can even broadcast dashboards around the office. So I'm curious if you've ever worked at a place that broadcast dashboards uh, around the office. I've actually only ever worked in one, I would say real corporate environment, and they just had MSNBC on 24 seven. It was, it was kind of distracting at times. Um, but I'm just curious if you've ever worked in a place where that would actually be valuable. So just, just curious. Monday.com integrates with your favorite tools and can So integrates with your favorite tools. I'm gonna to go ahead and have this be the last one here because I think you kind of get the point. Um, just in terms of thinking of what are the top 
one or two big objections someone would have to doing business with you for any software company out there now pretty much the number one of the top three objections is going to be does it work with the software i'm already paying for and so as you can see here with the pause screenshot they have a bunch of logos of other companies that it's that uh, their customers are probably already using i think it's kind of interesting i think that's a trello logo there so uh, it'd be interesting to know why someone would use Trello and um, Monday.com at the same time. I don't know. I, that might be a that might be for something else. But anyway, something you want to keep in mind, and not only just talking about your features and your benefits and identifying who this is for, but also handling a, a cup at least one or two objections in your YouTube ad, um, as long as it makes sense and you know the the ad doesn't run too long. So. As a general note, again, I mentioned that there's two, uh, there's two or three other versions of this ad. So one version is specifically designed for marketing. If you manage a team, you should be using Monday.com. It's a platform to manage any team and any project. Marketing campaigns, classic project management, sales pipelines, creative productions, anything. And then they have a version that's specifically for remote teams. So I have a team based all over the world. Everybody works from a home office. Monday.com makes it really easy for them to collaborate as if they were in the same room. And if you're getting some value out of this video, make sure you hit that like button, comment below with your questions. Let's move on to group of ads number two from Reich. Total of 24 million views. This one, even though it's old, labeled by them, so I assume they're not running it anymore, but it did get 17 million views. And uh, we'll get to why that's actually a really bad thing. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the first couple seconds of the ad. Get a real-time bird's eye view of your projects. Create project plans in one... So what, something that, uh, two things I wanna point out with the timing. So number one, you can see here we're six seconds in and they're into their, only into their second sentence. So the first three seconds of the ad are total waste. You don't need to spend any time with your logos because people just don't care. The first part of the ad should be enrolling your ideal customer. So I think that they do a good job because you're either going to look at a Gantt chart and go, oh, cool, Gantt charts, or you're going to be like the other 90, I don't know, 8% of the population who goes, oh, Gantt charts, skip. <laughs> I don't know. People just seem to either really like Gantt charts or just absolutely hate them or have no idea what they are. But uh, I have a fun fact for you about Gantt charts. Gantt charts later. So looking at my notes here, something else that I wanted to point out is the ad itself is only 28 seconds. So please, if you take one thing out of this video, out of, out of this lengthy, lengthy video, please make your in-stream ads longer than 30 seconds. Uh, ideally, at least 45. The ideal place to hit is about 90 seconds. And that's because if an ad is less than 30 seconds, you're gonna be charged for every single view. So when we see 17 million views on this video, they paid for every single one of them just because they were three seconds shy. If it had been 31 seconds and someone had skipped, then they probably wouldn't have been charged. Now, uh, YouTube and Google do crack down if you just make like a 30 second one ad. Um, so that's why I recommend doing at least 45 seconds and not just have half the ad like a blank screen or something. So they'll be able to find out that you're trying to game the system. But so just go ahead and make sure your ads are legitimately more than 30 seconds. Um, I, I remember a client who went through the YouTube creator program for or YouTube ad program and the, the YouTube and Google themselves, they make ads for small businesses and they intentionally make them 29 seconds so that they have to pay for every single ad. So I think that might be what happened here. A Google rep helped them. I'm not saying that's what happened, but maybe either way, just make sure your ads are more than 30 seconds. I talk way too long on that. Let's go back. In one click, see the big picture across multiple projects. Again, see the big picture across multiple projects. It seems to be something that apparently no project management tool does because Monday and Reich and some of the other ones I've seen, they all talk about see the big picture like in, in one place. So uh, I guess uh, eventually that won't be a cool feature anymore because everyone will have, will have done it. Get real-time updates, create dependencies, and bring emails to the schedule. So if you remember what happened in the monday.com ad when I paused in between the uh, bullet points, so I'm gonna scroll back up here, when they were talking about see who's in charge, upload files, view uh, views so you can see information in different ways and make sure projects don't overlap. When the narrator was going through that, you were actually seeing how the platform looked. 
Whereas here, we only see create dependencies and bring emails to schedule. We don't see anything that tells us about real-time updates, and we don't really see a big picture across multiple projects, which is supposedly a big selling point because this is only one Gantt chart. So this is one project, and they multiple times talked about seeing Thing, seeing a bird's eye view. So even if they had just overlaid a static image of a bird's eye view of being able to see multiple Gantt charts or multiple projects and some sort of dashboard, I think that really, really would have uh, beefed up the impact of the ad. So let's go ahead and finish this up. This is Reich Gantt Charts. Plan, visualize, and share work. So that's pretty much the end of the ad. So if I were to redo this and this was a client that had come to me, something I would do is I would take the very end, or actually we have to see the end of the ad. I would essentially start the ad with free Gantt chart tool or free Gantt chart platform. And then I would actually jump straight into see the big picture across multiple projects. So when they're doing this demo, uh, this would be at the five second mark. So we go straight into showing the viewer what the what the uh, Gantt chart software can do. And I think this is important because you also wanna think about the sophistication of who you're targeting, right? So someone who's completely new to project management, they're not, they're gonna be intimidated by Gantt charts. Someone like myself or another project manager who actually likes Gantt charts, the first thing we wanna see is how cool the software is, right? Because we have, I'm not saying other people are, are, are dumb, I'm just saying the level of sophistication of someone who wants a Gantt chart tool is higher than the level of sophistication who just wants someone who just wants a project management tool because this is a lot more specific and most people who are new to project management don't tend to like Gantt charts like they're they they tend to not like them for some reason so um, just something to keep in mind with the experience level and level of uh, experience level that's a better way to put it I guess of your ideal customer and now for the ad that kicked off this entire long long vlog wow I've been talking a long time I really thought this was going to be shorter. So thank you for sticking with me if you're, if you're still here. The ad that sparked this all off, I'm going to do my best to be as calm and objective as possible, but this one just grinded my gears the wrong way. And I thought, you know, this would be a great time to kind of show how creativity and maybe being sarcastic or snarky can totally miss the mark. And sometimes it's better to just be plain, but let's go ahead and go through this. If you're not using Rye for project management and team collaboration, you're literally stuck in the 70s. So I really like the beginning of this ad because it definitely is a pattern interrupt compared to all the other project management and business related ads that I see on YouTube because most of them follow the format of monday.com. They're doing some sort of screen capture or it's just some person just talking in front of a camera, kind of like what I'm doing here, I'm just sitting here talking, right? So in terms of the context of thinking of all the other ads that I would be seeing as an entrepreneur business owner on YouTube, this definitely breaks the mold and it grabs my attention, I really like that. So something that I would change though is the first three seconds, just cut that cut that off because he, at seven seconds, the first sentence was done. So between three seconds and seven seconds is when the sentence actually takes place. So just doing some quick math, you'd probably be able to get that full hook in and pattern interrupt in in the first five seconds, as opposed to wasting three of your five seconds with um, some rollerblades, right? So that's something that I think definitely should be, would, would help with this ad and again with your ads as well. Don't believe me? Hmm? Are you using right? So the... <laughs> I don't know, it's probably just me. Um, the, the, the kind of smug look on, on his face just kind of turned me off a little bit. But this is a perfect ex example of if you can really nail down what is funny to your ideal customer, then you can actually really grab their attention because I'm sure there are other entrepreneurs who found that funny and found that intrigued as opposed to, you know, I just sit there and go, what the heck, what? Whereas other people go, ha, ha, that's funny, right? And so that's one way to alienate everyone but your ideal prospect. So obviously I was not a good fit for this ad, but hopefully it hit the mark with some other business owners. So I'm just going to go through one of the first examples here. I'm actually going to skip to the last one. So essentially what he does 
is with each one of these, he says, are you using email? It was invented in 1971. Are you using a whiteboard? It was invented in 1975. And so for copyright stuff, I'm just gonna skip to this last one here and you'll kind of get the gist of what's going Are you on. still using spreadsheets that were invented in 1979? Or are you living in the present and using Reichsgott charts to keep everyone literally on the same page? So the problem that I have with this ad is it's it's clever and funny as in, in showing, hey, email was invented in the 70s, whiteboards was invented in the 70s, spreadsheets were invented in the 70s, but it's technically insulting the viewer. It's saying, hey, you're using email, you outdated old person. Now I might just be reading into this, but this is something that you need to make sure with your own copy and your own creative that your ideal customer would find it funny. Now I'm a millennial, which means I would probably be in the younger age bracket of the people who they're targeting this ad with. And I can think of my clients who are older than me by anywhere from five to 15 years. And I can't think of a single one of them who would find this funny, right? Because it's it's kind of insulting people who are still using email, still using Gantt chart, or still, oops, I gave it away, still, still using uh, spreadsheets or whiteboards. And so something you just wanna keep in mind is make sure that you aren't making fun of your ideal customer as part of your jokes. So I think that's why this really grinded my gears the wrong way. The other thing I wanna point out is throughout this entire ad, what I've paused on right now, 42 seconds, is the only time I can, I've scrubbed through this multiple times, this is the only time I can actually figure out what the software was doing. And what bugs the, the whatever out of me is that what was shown in this two second screenshot is actually really intriguing to me because it's something that I wish I had with the Gantt charts that I use where you could click and you see the entire task, right? This is something that actually really is cool. And I don't know if monday.com does as good of a job with it, but as someone who's actually trying to make an informed decision, I wanna see more of that. I wanna see less jokes about telling me that I'm an idiot because I still use email that was invented in the 70s and more about the Gantt chart features. And speaking of Gantt charts, turns out they were actually invented in the 1890s. So if you're going to make an ad, uh, essentially talking about a bunch of software that was invented in the 70s, 1970s, you probably don't want to end talking about how cool a feature is of a something that was invented by a Polish engineer. I'm just gonna put his name up here because I cannot pronounce it in the mid 1890s. So also make sure that the, uh, I guess the jokes are consistent because Gantt charts I still think are really good and there's a place for email and whiteboards just probably not in the context of what they are talking about. So hopefully that wasn't uh, too much ragging on them but just make sure that your humor does not mix miss the mark and if you're unsure, just leave the humor out, right? So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you got some value out of this video and you have some ideas on how to improve your own YouTube advertising. Make sure you comment below with your questions. I do apologize that I couldn't show more of this last video. I just didn't have as much commentary and I really wanted to make sure that this could get past all of the uh, fair, fair use um, filters. So as always, keep building the business you love.